Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another video conference interview as part of ACP Live's house call coverage of ABA 2020. I'm Kevin Kunzman, Managing Editor of ACP Live, and today we're talking about a topic that actually probably would have headlined a lot of our discussion and uh, follow-up points of have we been on the floor of Philadelphia for ABA 2020, and that is uh, promising schizophrenia drug candidate SEP 363856. And today to discuss the drug a little bit more at length and understand its um, role uh, relative to comparators in the field and uh, just what exactly its potential could be for this patient population is Dr. John Crystal, the chair of psychiatry at Yale University. And before we get into those talking points, uh, Dr. Crystal, would you like to start off by saying hi to everyone? Well, thank you, Kevin, and it's a pleasure to be here. So as you uh, and certainly the people uh, watching probably know, the holy grail for schizophrenia research for the last 50 years has been to find uh, a medication that could be used to treat the symptoms of schizophrenia that didn't block the dopamine D2 receptor. All the other treatments that we have for the treatment of schizophrenia, all the progress that we've made in the treatment of schizophrenia have just been involved, have, over the last 50 years, have involved modifying the dopamine D2 receptor antagonists. And obviously these antipsychotic medications help a lot of people. But we also know that they, even in those patients whom they help, dopamine D2 receptor antagonists often leave various symptoms uh, unimproved or inadequately approved. And we know that for many people who are treated with these medications, in order to control their symptoms, they have to take doses of the medications that cause side effects. And some of these side effects um, are consequences of blockade of the dopamine D2 receptor. In other words, creating a dopamine signaling deficiency in the brain. We know that uh, there are illnesses like Parkinson's disease that are dopamine deficiencies. And when you produce a blockade of dopamine D2 receptors, there's a potential to create symptoms that look like Parkinson's disease. For example, um, tremor, reduction in spontaneous activity, reduced uh, emotional, facial emotional expression, and other kinds of side effects. So it's really been very important to try to, um, to come up with a medication that can reduce uh, these side effects. And the thought for the last 50 years has been, could we come up with a medication that could treat the symptoms of schizophrenia without blocking the dopamine 2 receptor? Now, one of the most exciting parts of this story for me is how Synovion went from that idea to a drug to test in schizophrenia patients. And this involved a very creative uh, collaboration with a company called Psychogenics. So Synovian had a family of compounds that they wanted to test. And, and they brought these compounds over to Psychogenics who have very sophisticated screening mechanisms um, in animal behavioral models that can give you a profile of the behavioral effects of those drugs in animals. And when they ran, uh, I'm going to call it CEP856, when they ran 856 through the animal models, the psychogenics data suggested that it was a drug that might work for the treatment of psychosis. In other words, it had a behavioral profile in animals that was consistent with having an antipsychotic effect in people. And so even though when they ran that test, they didn't know how 856 was producing that antipsychotic effect. The, uh, the ability to get a signal from that animal model led Synovion to decide um, to test this drug in schizophrenia patients. Along the way, Synovion found that this drug uh, targeted a very distinctive and not well-studied target in the brain. That, that target is called TAR1, or trace amine receptor 1. And we 
don't have any other medications that we use that target those receptors. But CEP856 stimulates this receptor. And it's thought, knowing what we know now about the data, that the beneficial effects that it produces are likely via stimulation of the TAR1 receptor. So it's a completely new mechanism. 856 does not stimulate or block the dopamine receptors themselves. So it has the possibility of producing benefit, maybe even more benefit, with a different profile of tolerability. So Synovian took these exciting data and boldly, I believe, made a commitment to test this drug in people with schizophrenia. Um, and so they conducted this large study, uh, which was reported in the New England Journal of Medicine, um, and uh, 245 patients, 34 sites, five countries, right? So this was a four-week clinical trial where they compared um, placebo to do two doses of CEP856. The exciting finding from this study was that people improved about twice as much on 856 than they improved on placebo. In other words, the gold standard scale that we use to rate the symptoms of schizophrenia is called the PANS. And the PANS on placebo over four weeks dropped by about 10 points, and it was dropped by nearly double that in the group that was treated with 856. Now, this was a four-week study, which isn't a long time to treat people with schizophrenia, but one of the interesting pieces of data that came from, from the main study was that the difference between drug and placebo became bigger and bigger as time went by. In other words, the more time patients um, were on 856, the more there was greater benefit on the drug than placebo. One of the important parts of this paper, though, was that there was another study, a follow-up study, that also, was also reported. And over the next many months, you know, over five months, um, uh, the benefits that were seen with 856 treatment improved, increased over time. Um, another exciting a part of the study was that the safety profile for 856 was extremely good. None of the side effects that you associate with blocking the dopamine D2 receptor, um, so the motor side effects or increases in the hormone prolactin or adverse effects on, on plasma uh, lipid levels or EKG changes, none of those areas uh, of side effects that we commonly see with standard antipsychotic um, uh, medications were an issue with 856. Uh, there were some people who felt a little bit sleepy on the medication um, and a, a few uh, reports of nausea, uh, mild generally, and, uh, but this was a very, very well-tolerated medication overall that seemed to do a lot better than placebo um, and uh, and, uh, and not block the dopamine D2 receptor. That makes it perhaps, hopefully, the first medication that we'll have, uh, have in, our, in our toolbox to treat schizophrenia uh, to not block the dopamine D2 receptor. And uh, that's a, for me, that's a really exciting and potentially really important uh, clinical advance. Yeah, that's that's fascinating, and honestly, just from the perspective of it being, uh, you know, a, a novel addressing of these symptoms, it's just really fascinating to to know and and learn. And I'm excited to learn more about it as uh, you know the the mechanism is better understood as we go forward. But obviously, uh, those baseline symptoms improving as they have um, is obviously great. Doc, if you could talk a little bit about the patient population and exactly sort of what, what they're burdened with and uh, I guess even what, what it's like initiating treatment for schizophrenia in these patients and why, um, you know, SEP's findings have been so beneficial toward them in, in terms of their livelihood. Sure. So, so schizophrenia is a collection of symptoms. Um, and, and we tend to group the clusters of symptoms of schizophrenia into positive symptoms. These are symptoms that most people don't have in their daily lives, like um, hearing voices, uh, auditory hallucinations, 
or having very strong false beliefs that we call delusions. Um, but schizophrenia is also associated with um, uh, negative symptoms. In other words, functions that we take for granted that may be a struggle for some people uh, with schizophrenia. So people with schizophrenia, for example, um, may have difficulty experiencing pleasure or conveying their experience of pleasure. They may be socially disconnected and withdrawn from people. They may have trouble mobilizing um, uh, uh, motivation to do various tasks. Um, and so we call that cluster of symptoms negative symptoms. And then they may have other symptoms like anxiety or or a negative mood or other kinds of symptoms. Those are mood symptoms. So one of the things that you often see with standard medications that block dopamine D2 receptors is that they're pretty good at blocking the psychosis symptoms, the hallucinations and the delusions. And often those medications are dosed up and up and up to target those medications. But when you do that, oftentimes you're not very effectively treating the negative symptoms. In the initial data that we have with SEP 856, one of the exciting things is that the various clusters of symptoms all seem to uh, uh, improve together. And if that holds up as research goes on, that could be a very um, important uh, finding. And um, something, you know, that's sort of a repeated issue, um, at least from what I hear in clinical psychiatry is, um, you know, treatment adherence and, uh, you know, just uh, reliance on, on the patient side to uh, continue care and see it through for, for the benefit that maybe if it doesn't have immediately, it can have in the future or at least, you know, the reduction of severe or worsening symptoms down the road. Is this something that uh, you know, given uh, the benefits you guys are seeing, is 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 of less concern for schizophrenia patients that may be treated with this. Well, I, I think adherence is a, is a big challenge for every medication, for every clinical indication, and but I completely agree with you that for many people with schizophrenia who are taking uh, the standard uh, antipsychotic medications that we have it's a struggle that they're making a choice every day if they're taking pills. Do I want the side effects in order to get the benefit? And it's hard enough, even if you are committed to taking a medication to stick to taking it every day, but if you add the burden of dealing with side effects, it's not surprising that some people choose to give, give up the benefits of a control of their schizophrenia symptoms in order to avoid um, side effects. This medication, CEP856, seems extremely well tolerated. And overall, adherence to treatment in this study was really quite good. Um, so I think uh, we're hopeful that a medication like this will be um, uh, well um, adhered to uh, when people are taking it on their own and not um, uh, getting the support for adherence that are, is built into these clinical trials. Lastly, obviously, there's a call for, now that we've seen uh, significant findings for, for greater and longer duration trials, uh, greater patient population, where else do you see clinical pursuit going for a drug that we're both still trying to interpret, but also, you know, find the fullest potential for this acne patient population? Yeah. Well, I think positive data generate a lot of excitement but they also generate a lot of impatience. Um, people will see a study like this and they'll say, when can I get 856? Uh, when will it be at my local drugstore? Um, it's still a long road ahead. Um, and I'm, you know, I think the important thing is that, that um, uh, the development of, of these medications is slow, challenging, and costly, but a positive finding from a study like this is a strong incentive for a company like Synovion to continue the development. And hopefully someday um, it will be available to people. At the moment, people who are interested in TAR-1 uh, stimulation 856, they should contact Synovion to find out if there's a, a, um, a clinical trial close to them. Maybe they could sign up and participate and actually contribute to generating the information that we need to really evaluate this drug.